Hi everyone, Julia here recording this on December, oh, December, see I can't get these dates right, January 5th, 2023 or the year 5917 and it's moody, but I don't know if it's 5917 until March or if it's now, so scratch that, but anyway we have the beautiful Oracle <laughs> Witch with us today. And that's an affectionate term. And Cheryl is back and she has some more great gnosis for us. What do you got for us, Cheryl? Well, I was, you know, meditating a little bit and I had a couple of things that landed on the plate. So I thought I'd come here and share this today with all you lovely people. And um, I, I think that the title of this, the start of it is just called the journey to the self, which is what this work actually is, is we are, you know, trying to return back to the whole of who we are. And um, through that journey and the process, we have been talking about how to get rid of fears. And um, because we can't get to ourselves until we get rid of that. And, you know, our reality can't change until we do this work. So I was listening to, you know, Julia on one of her, on her last video, um, her beautiful food forest walk and talks that she does, which I just think are so inspiring. And they just have such a good vibe about them. You can tune your day to that good vibe and, and it just opens up your mind a little bit more so that you can take in, you know, the good things that are heading your way. And in that video, Julia was talking about make 2023 the year you break free. And Julia talked about, you know, when you set your intention to do this healing work, you know, magical helpers just show up out of nowhere. And when she said that, I thought, oh, that's so good, you know, because that intention starts to bring to you what you need to break free. So when you set the intention to do this work, then the system is also, it's reflective, is going to start bringing you experiences and people and all of the things that you're going to need to journey through this process. And, you know, as I was thinking about how these magical helpers show up, there was an instance in, in my life, I may have mentioned it before, but I had an experience where there was someone that I'd met at one of the Tom Campbell immerses that I was involved in. Um, I, we had just talked on the phone, you know, back and forth for a year or so. We liked the same scientist, you know. I like the scientist Schauberger. He does a lot of water technology stuff and and we got to talking about Walter Russell and all of these great intuitive scientists that we've had in the past. Um, and so as we were talking about that, we just went on these journeys together and just thought about all the things. And he's he's, you know, he's completely involved in doing fear work. He's been doing his own fear work for a while. And one day I get a call just out of the blue and he said, hey, Cheryl, I'm in Texas. Um, why don't I come by for a visit? And, and he just showed up. He showed up like two days later at my door. I opened the door and there he is. And I thought, this is really odd. And so we went down to downtown Denton and we didn't have anything planned. And this is one of the good things I like about just being open and open to new experiences. Because when you don't make a lot of plans, that gets, gives the system a lot of wiggle room to bring to you, you know, more in-depth things. If you plan things out down to the ninth, what happens is, it, you know, it's a reflection. So it's got to kind of stick with your program and what you're doing. So it's going to bring you more of what you think, which is going to be those plans. So that's why I don't like to make plans. I just say, okay, I'm going here. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm completely open. So when we met in Denton, there was no plans. So we walked to the town center where there's a beautiful building in the middle. And we just started walking around the courthouse and having this, you know, wonderful conversation. And then as we're walking around this courthouse, we had set to rest for a minute. And this woman had walked by. As I noticed the woman walking by, I, I was having a conversation with Patrick about this subject. And I said, I said, well, Patrick, you know, nobody knows me here, so I don't really know anybody in this area of town, but I know about this Denton Square house, and it's really, it has good vibes here, and I really like it, but I don't really know anybody here, 
And at that same exact instant, a car's driving by with somebody hanging out the window going, hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? And I just died laughing because I had just told him I don't know anybody. Here's this person waving out the window. And I had just met this person that morning before in a yoga class that I had attended. So I just met the person. I didn't really know him, but it looked like they knew me because he's waving, hey, Cheryl. And then Patrick looked at me and said, I thought you didn't know anybody. And I'm just rolling because it was just so funny, the timing of the event. And everything was just timed together and all the magical helpers are coming in. And then right after this person said, hey, Cheryl, a woman was walking by at the same exact time. So I'm waving at this person. Hey, how you doing? And this woman thought that I was making fun of her. And I, it wasn't even about her. I was looking behind her and interacting with someone behind her. But she, you know, turned around and looked at me and just gave me, uh, you know, a, a go to heck look. And she was just mad. <laughs> and I told Patrick, I said, oh, my gosh, she thought I was making fun of her. So I kind of fo followed her. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I wasn't making fun of you. There was someone behind you that I was trying to talk to. And then she turned around and gave me another scowl and, and just walked off. She wasn't buying it, you know, and and she was just angry. And then and then I came back and sat back in my chair and Patrick looks at me and he said, wow, what was that? <laughs> because he knows it's reflective. So he knew that was something going on, you know, there. And so as we moved on through that experience, we ran into her again. And as we're walking and I see her again, because I said, I don't know what that's about. Heck, I, I don't even know her. I don't know what that's about at all. And then Patrick looked at me, he goes, well, it's not mine. And then I looked back at Patrick. I said, okay, you're right. It's mine. It is mine. You're right. <laughs> it's mine. And that's when I revealed to Patrick, I said, well, I have a, I have a fear of women. Uh, I've had this fear for a long time. Um, I, I have been working on it, you know, uh, but yeah, that's reflective of my fear of women. She's totally mad at me. There it is right there. I said, yep. I was afraid and she showed up and then Patrick says, ah, and so then we talked about why I had the fear of women because I, it was triggered, of course, when she got mad at me. And so I'm dealing with the fear now. I've been triggered and I just looked at him and said, okay, I'm triggered. And I, I have a fear of women, you know, because of this and this. And, and he goes, well, isn't that a generalization of all women? Because all women are not, um, do not treat people bad. Uh, there's a lot of women that treat them very good. And I said, well, Patrick, if I have, a, you know, a fear of women and a fear of a woman, you know, treating me bad, well, then I'm bringing that right to me. So I'm getting a lot of experience of being tra treated bad like by women, just like there, <laughs> just like that. So it's kind of entrenched that fear of women in me. And as we move forward, I just kept talking about it and we rolled around it and as we talked about it, and he just gave me the information I needed to help pluck that fear out of there. And, and I really worked hard on that fear that day, and it really shifted it. It changed that fear because he was able to give me logic around what I was thinking about women. And then if, if you think about it moving forward, had I not worked on that fear that day, there is no way that I would be able to be sitting here right now with this fantastic woman, Julia. I would not be able to do, be talking to anybody, especially talking to another woman. I just was not able to because I haven't had a fear of women. But now that I've worked through that, now I can. And I understand that just like all men are not bad, all women are not bad either. But we have bad men and women across the board. We have all different ages of souls here. Some people have the dark uglies and some don't. And so that's just an example of how once you get a fear, it starts manifesting in your reality and then you just get more of it. Then it embeds in the fear and then it just in, 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 in embeds it even deeper into your psyche. See, all, all women can be mean, you know, and and then you start believing that. But really what's happening is because of that fear, we are powerful creators. I was creating scary women in my life and they were everywhere I, but I was doing it I was the cause of it 
because of my fear, my beliefs around um, how women are. And they're not all like that. So I had to change my perception and change my belief around that. So I had that one. And then um, another fear that I had when Patrick showed up was, I, I, I've talked about this one a little bit before too, is I had a fear of face masks. I had an experience where um, a, a doctor, I was in a situation where it wasn't, wasn't so good. And, and when I woke up, there was a doctor with a face mask on and my child mind perceived that because I could see the fear in his face. But the fear in his face was about, he was trying to save my life because I was in the process of dying and he was trying to save my life and it was scaring the heck out of him. And so when I come to, that's all I see is this scared doctor with a face mask on. I perceived that fear and what was happening as he's trying to hurt me. He's he, this person is trying to kill me. So then when, you know, the, the pandemic was here, everywhere I went, you know, there was face masks everywhere. And Julie was laughing. It's like, well, that's how we got the face mask thing. <laughs> I don't know about all that. All I know is I had a fear of them. And so Patrick, as we're sitting there, we go into a restaurant and you had to wear face masks to get into them. He puts this face mask on and I didn't see him put it on. When I turned to my left and I saw him, he had this ridiculous face mask on where it made him look like a dog. He, it looked like a, he looked like a puppy. All he needed was ears and a tail. And I just started rolling. It was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen. I, I've never seen a man be able to make fun of themselves like that. And it, he was just hilarious. And that was able to replace that scary fear that I had, you know, previously. And so then he helped me through that fear. And, and so that's two fears it's that I got. That his, it's ironic that his mask made him look like a dog since you had the fear of big dogs too. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. And see how that experience rolled into two fears at once, right? So I had the fear of women. I had the fear of big dogs and face masks. So yeah, it rolled it all. And I call those a fear layer cake. And it, but it was there to help me see what I was doing. See, the system was trying to assist me, even though it was scaring me, but that was my fear. It was trying to show me what I was doing, right? So as we're, and, and then after all of that, I'm a little bit exhausted because I've been doing fear work all, most of the day and we were sitting at a table and then all of a sudden, you know, we're eating some lunch and I hear this noise. And here comes this street sweep, sweeper coming down the street, right where we were sitting, eating our lunch. <laughs> and, and I can see all the dust flying up. And I look over and it was like, oh, man, it's going to blow dust all in my food. And I immediately took the negative, unoptimistic route. Oh, this thing, here it comes. It's blowing food, you know, dust in my food. It's not what I want, you know. And, and, and then again. I'm sitting there and I turn and look at Patrick. He's put his mask back on. He's got his arms up in the air, waving at the street sweeper and having a great time with this experience. And then the street sweeper is looking back at Patrick and they're waving at each other like they're in a stadium doing the wave. And it was so ridiculous that it got my attention. And I just busted out laughing again. And I was like, wait a minute. You can take the optimistic route in any situation you have, any situation that's going on, unless it's just super infused with dark uglies. But in most cases, it's not that way. You're out in public and things are happening. You're bumping around with it. And when I saw that situation where him and the street sweeper was just having the best time, I just set my fork down and I just had to grab my rib cage because I was laughing so hard. It was so ridiculous. And in that moment, I learned, you know, no matter what, you got to be optimistic and positive because when you look at it, at events going on around you and then you come at it with a negative, you know, a negative point of view, well, that's just going to bring you more negativity. And that's the whole point of we've got to be positive in our dealings every day. And it, it is more difficult to be positive when you're in the middle of doing fear work. It is more difficult. But 
on the daily, most of the time, you're not in a triggered fear situation. And we can look at those situations in a positive way because the system is just helping us and bringing us the experiences that we need to get out of our own dark uglies. It's trying to help you. It's not trying to make you mad. It's really, really trying to help you. So, so this one encounter helped me to remove tons of fear around multiple subjects. So this one day, I was able to leap bounds ahead of the work that I was doing. And, you know, I thought Patrick was going to stay around a little while. No, he packed, he left that afternoon and went back home and I didn't see him again. He just showed up for my fear work day. So how's that for magical workers and assistants just coming out of the woodwork right when I needed it, right at the right time. And it was just a, an amazing experience. And that's how I saw with my own two eyes that it is true. We get these fantastical helpers that come help us do this work. When you're doing this work, you are not alone. And so what we're doing is the process of removing fear. That's what we're doing here. And we've talked about this process several times before, and I just want to briefly go over it and then go into a little another piece of it. Um, so what we're doing, just like Julia said, is setting your intentions. Your intent is the driver. It's like the force. Use the force. So you want to set your intent. I want to break free in 2023. I want to get rid of this fear. So I stop manifesting it in my reality and making myself uncomfortable with it so you set your intent i want to remove this fear and you know you just have to know you know that you're going to get help with this you're not alone so number two is every single time you feel a negative emotion that's where it's at you've got a fear operating under there and i'm telling you it can look like it's out there and somebody's doing something to you, but I promise you, if you're having a negative feeling, then it is you, and there is a fear under there, and it's yours. It's never out there. It's always in here. You know, this is a journey to the self, and what you're manifesting is you. <laughs> it's you doing it. So what you're going to do is you're going to have that negative emotion, and then you're going to stop what you're doing right then and deal with it in the moment that you feel it. And then you're going to, that's number three, you're going to deal with it. I'm going to stay here and deal with this thing. And then number four is then you're going to try to find out, find the fear. You know, just like I was, you know, telling Patrick, oh, that's not mine. I don't know what her problem is. <laughs> well, she was just a manifestation of my fear. So it was, oh, I don't know what my problem is. And then I, then I fessed up and come clean and said, yeah, that's mine. So you want to find the fear. And if you can, you know, write it down because I started making a list of them so that when I would manifest them in my experience, I could recognize which fear I was working on. And this is just over time when, when you're doing this process. Because they will come. It's your patterns of experience. These fears are coming at you anyway. Uh, even, but most of the time we're distracting ourselves and we're not dealing with it, but we can always feel it. But we think it's coming from outside of us, but it's not. You can feel them. So you've already got the patterns. It's coming anyway. You reflected your fears into your reality. It's a feedback loop because we live in a vibrational reality where your vibrations, your thoughts and emotions are reflected back to you in your reality. We do not see reality the way it is. Instead, we perceive reality the way we are. And so in saying that, you know, just know not to beat yourself up because, you know, a lot of these things is a, it's a self-discovery process and it's not something that we just completely understand out of the box. This is just a, something that we have to learn here in this reality. And so as I was thinking about, you know, let's break free in 2023, um, I was flipping around, uh, looking at a couple of videos and this is how I get magical helpers too, for what I'm going to talk about that day and what I want to speak on. And I, I, I ran across this just obscure story and it was just this man that lives in Colorado by himself and he lives in Colorado by himself and he records the snowfall and does all this stuff. 
He doesn't have a car. He lives kind of off the land. And what he does is once a month, he goes into the little town where he lives to get his supplies. And he had to teach himself how to ski. And so, so what he did is he learned to ski to go get his supplies. And, and, and he started telling the story and it just hit so to home. He said, the main thing is learning how to fall, not really learning how to ski. He was the biggest piece of this is learning how to fall. He said, if you're going to fall, I had to learn to sit, you know, it's much easier falling on your butt than your face <laughs> and learning how to fall is important. And then I just thought, wow, that's exactly how fear work is. It's uncomfortable. But if you get good at feeling uncomfortable, you get good at the fall. You get good. The process is so much easier. You get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. So you're learning how to fall. So, you know, being uncomfortable, being comfortable with uncom feeling uncomfortable is like learning how to fall on skis. When you feel the fall coming, sit. You don't have to face plant. Just sit with it. And over time, the, the intensity of the feeling when they come up diminishes. And you will see your reality shifting out of the fear vibration and into a vibration of love. So I, I thought, wow, that's exactly a, a great metaphor for this. And because I did have to get comfortable with those feelings because those were my fears. Well, fear feels scary. And I didn't like the way it felt either. So I just got comfortable with it. And I worked on accepting the way that it felt. And what do you think about what I've said so far, Julia? Wow, that is just, yeah, that's some pearls of wisdom there. Just amazing stuff. And, you know, the fact that you could have that awareness that you were getting lessons, you know, from these events, that's huge. You know, when you can get to that point in your healing process where you have that you know, it's all, it's all about that honest, genuine self-awareness where you, you know, you're just looking at yourself straight and not trying to hide from anything and just, you know, realizing the way it is and admitting to it and working through that. And it's just amazing how the system, whatever you want to call it, puts those opportunities and they might seem like obstacles or maybe even worse than obstacles at the moment. But if you can draw out from there with that self-awareness like Cheryl did and her, you know, with her magical day there. Wow. Like that made all the difference. If she wouldn't have had that self-awareness about what was going on, that would have been a miserable day for her, but it turned <laughs> out to be one of the best days ever for her. So man, like you said, it's all about how you perceive things. Yeah. Huge, you know, self-awareness is the first step. And I also like what you said about not making plans you know you just make very vague plans and I've always said that's what I even do with my intentions you know they're not too too specific and you know a lot of the law of attraction people say to get very specific with what you want this kind of thing but I've always oh. liked that element of surprise and just leaving room for you know more magic than I could imagine on my own to happen so yeah I know that if I leave that space, then who knows what will feel. It, 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 you know, it'll be better than what I could think of usually. So it's nice surprises. So, yeah, amazing stuff. Thank you for that. Oh, y'all are very welcome. You know, and, and the thing about making too many plans, you know, if you detail out what you want into the future into such detail, it can't bring it to you because it just can't set it up the way you're envisioning it right? Because you're doing it and the system can't help you do that because there's so many moving parts to, to your outside reality because this is a multiplayer game. There's other people here banging around doing stuff too, which, which affects us. So yeah, don't make plans. You just want to be vague about it. Just set your intent. This is what I want. And, and then like we all, the only plans we had we're going to Denton's town square. That was it. And then it unrolled this thing. And even Patrick was saying, wow, Cheryl, are we in some kind of loop? We're in a consciousness loop. Something's happening here. <laughs> this is really weird. He thought it was weird too, but we just went with it. 
because we both know that we're creating our reality. So it just made it really interesting. So as you start, you know, removing your fear, there will be times that you feel uncomfortable. And see, I, I was feeling uncomfortable and, and I'm in front of Patrick and I'm like, I'm just dripping fear and going, oh, <laughs> but I gave myself some compassion and it's okay. You know, he likes me. He's my friend. He knows about this work because he's been in it before. He knew where I was and he had compassion for me too. And that helped a lot too. So you will feel the fear as it comes up. And so you just let it be. Allow yourself to feel the way you do. Accept it. Just accept it. This is what it is. This is me. Ta -da. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It does not last long. Allow it to process through. You can say, this is how I feel. You know, this is how I feel right now. You know, and if, if, you're, if you're feeling really uncomfortable, then you can just remove yourself from other people around you. You don't want to, you know, come out swinging, you know, when you're around other people, because when you first start doing this work, it can feel like that, you know, it, it's, it, it can be pretty intense on the first, first few go rounds, but it diminishes over time, like we said, and then you can start feeling more love vibrations, and there, I've got a little bit more on that here in a minute. So that's that's the end of that little piece. And what I wanted to talk about next, and uh, you'll probably have some, you know, insight into this one too, is is about the fight flight freeze system that we have. You know, we've we've we come with this evolved system within us, and it's a. Well, it's a have you heard about the, Have you heard about the fawn part? Fight flight fawn or freeze, where fawn is just always trying to please the abuser. Yeah. So they're saying that that's a trauma response. And that, that's one I've always kind of felt kind of like, well, you know, you're supposed to be in service of others, but there's, I guess there's a fine line, you know, when it comes to that one. So I just wanted to put that in there. Because that is yes, something I've I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes, there is that, that one fawn and it is a trauma response. And um, there is a fine line, you know, when you're doing things for other people and what it comes down to is what the intention behind what you're doing is, because what you do here does not matter. It's the intention behind why you're doing it. If you're doing somewhat something for someone so that you can manipulate the situation so that they'll treat you good, or you, you know, you want this person to not, you know, um, say anything you know negative towards you or at you and so you start doing all these things but see you're doing it out of fear you're doing it out of fear because you want that person to interact with you in a certain way or that you want that other person to see you in a certain way and so your intention is bad when you have an intention to not interact and deal with the fear well what's that going to do that's going to bring more of that fear to you so that's why the intention is so bad because when you change what you're doing and you're starting to do things, you know, because you care and you're doing it because it's about others and you're, you want to help. See, that is the, a better intention for, for what you're doing. So, yeah, there is in the fight, flight response system is fight, flight, freeze. And you can see these responses, you know, when someone gets scared, they'll exhibit one of these four, you know, the fawn response where they'll get real still you know, like a fawn, you know, deer in the headlights. And that's, that's their, their fight flight system there. And I call it the danger system, which is what it is. Your danger system has been activated and it could be your own fears, you know, or it can be, you know, something out in your environment, you know, something jumps out, you know, or somebody standing behind a door, you know, and boot, you know, and some people do well with this response, but other people who've had a lot of trauma, don't do very well with this response and it gets a hair trigger in it to where it can be it can be set off by a weed eater or a lawnmower or a somebody just making a loud noise next to them you know it gets a very jumpy a very jumpy I call it the hair trigger <laughs> and so you know it evolved you know when we lived in an environment with predators we had predators trying to eat us they showed up and and, it would, and what would happen is it would trigger this fight flight system. And it was a system to keep us out of danger. It wasn't designed to torture us. You know, we lived in a, in a more dangerous world than the world we live in today. 
So, uh, you know, we saw the danger. It would pop up. There's a line over there. Oh, shoot, y'all. We got to get to higher ground. We got to get out of here. Right. So, you you know, you would get yourself to a safe position. And then, you know, because everybody's watching the danger. You can see this in nature and animals, too. So everybody's watching the danger. And then they watch the danger leave the picture. OK, now the danger has gone and you're, you know, visually watching the thing leave. So your brain knows we're not in danger anymore. And then it turns off the system. Well, what's happened is now we're in a different environment. We're not in the same natural environment that we came from. We're in a modern environment. This is a whole new thing we're doing here. But we've got this ancient system that's getting triggered all the time, you know, with, with things that aren't really dangerous, you know. So now it's getting triggered with these internal fears that we have, you know, and we're encountering our fear, not a predator, you know, walking across the road. You know, I had just a woman walk by me, you know, and I'm triggered <laughs> and then she was triggered and it was all triggered. So what's happening is these internal fears, it's not, it, there's no mechanism to turn the fight flight system off once it gets activated. So our so what happens, our fear manifests in reality. We don't see the perceived danger move away because it's internal. It's within us. So it stays on. The system just stays on. It, so you're basically in perpetual fight flight mode every day, all day long. Unless you do something, it's stuck in the on position. And it when your fight flight system is perpetually stuck in the on position, in our world today, it's called ADHD. This is, you know, people and children that are stuck in fight flight mode. They're never not in it. They're always in fight flight mode. They're always scanning their environment for danger. They say, oh, well, yeah, they're hyper, you know. Well, they're hyper vigilant because they're looking for the danger because their brain is telling them all day long, you're in danger, you're in danger, you're in danger. Ah, you know. So, yeah, they have to be hyper vigilant because. Their, their brain's telling them that they need to protect themselves from a perceived da danger that's not even really there, you know. And mine was getting set off by, you know, somebody would turn on a weed whacker, you know, and that, that was it. The rest of my day was wrecked. But I didn't know what was going on until I started getting, you know, further into my process. So, so you will need to mentally turn this system off. You've got to you've got to get it back. See, there's two parts: fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and then there's rest, digest. Rest, digest is off. It's when you feel you know kind of comfortable. When your system is turned on, you've got a lot of anxiety going on because it's your brain telling you you're in danger. But then there's this other part. You know, you've seen people just sitting back, you know, just relaxing and digesting that little meal they just had. You know, they're just chilling. They're not in fight flight mode. They're they're in rest digest mode. And so the bracelets really helped me to turn off the system so I could think again. Because once your fight flight system is triggered, you know, you are disconnected from your logical thinking brain. You don't have access to, oh, wait a minute. That's not a saber tooth tiger trying to eat me. That's a freaking weed whacker. <laughs> it's not going to come over here and chew my toes off. It's a weed whacker. It's going to go trim the yard, you know. So, you know, so you can think again. You've got to reconnect yourself to rest digest. And so that's what you're doing with the bracelet. And that's why the first beat on the bracelet is stop. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. You are not in danger. That's your first bead. This turns off the fight flight system so that then you can move forward from there and you, you have all of your brain with you. To think about what you're doing and see as I as I worked with the 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 bracelet what happened was it started really getting in there and working on this you know this hair trigger of my fight flight system that I had because I lived perpetually in fight flight most of my life and when it first started turning off my fight flight system I was like wow I feel really strange I feel like I just feel tired you know <laughs> And then I realized, oh, this is what it feels like to just be in rest digest. This is what it feels like to not be in fight flight mode 24-7, seven days a week around, around the clock. 
And it was amazing. You know, I, I could rest in it and I felt so much better. And don't take that feeling for, um, you know, boredom and, oh, I need to go find something to do. This is boring. Soak it in. Once you get that fight flight system turned off, just rest. Because we're if you've lived with your fight flight system on for a long time, you just really need to sit back and rest for a minute. Listen to some music and just feel the good vibes of not being you know, in a mental state where your brain is telling you with every fiber of your being that you're in danger when you're really not, you know, but we think we are because our flight flight system is telling us, hey, look out, look out, look out, you know, and so and then that's just that's I really wanted to talk about the fight flight system because it has a lot to do with what we're doing here, getting rid of these fears and breaking free in 2023. So and I, you know, this this getting out of fight flight, it also connects again with Julia's, you know, language love languages and how this is operating. Because in that work, it's doing the same thing. It's just kind of coming from a different angle, is getting this fight flight system to to chill out and getting that get and once you get it to chill out, that hair trigger will get less and less and less. And it won't get activated for, you know, just minor things like blow dryers and weed eaters and things that aren't really a danger and so and that's that's my section on that Julia what are you, what are your thoughts there wow that is such good stuff great techniques and um yeah if people just follow this system like you said your system along with Michael's and Michael and Cheryl are going to be on together on Sunday what day will that be? January 8th. Yep. At uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time with a Q&A interactive if people want to join in on the Zoom. So people who are serious about healing, you got it right here. Like this video, all the ones that Cheryl and I have done and then Michael's workshop and the interview I have with him, man, you have it all right there and you just delve into it and, uh, have that self-awareness so when you have these times when it's not all peachy and your dark mm -hmm. ugly show up, that's opportunity you know that's yeah. not a you know it's not a negative thing and like cheryl said earlier you can find the positive in anything and you know she gave great examples so yeah it's all about getting that self-awareness and that intention you have intention and self-awareness there's no stopping you we are extremely powerful beings and this is why you know when we're looking out into our reality and we start seeing all the fears we have and then the things that we've done out of these fears to others and then how we've turned that around and and you know blaming ourselves for some of the things that happen you're turning all that power inward on yourself and it's extremely painful because we are powerful you know, we hurt ourselves more than anybody else can. <laughs> That's just kind of how it is. And so that leads me to this next part, which is, you know, we talked about in the last one, you know, um, what is trauma? And, you know, there's the event, you know, the event that happens that causes, you know, some of the fears that we have. And then there's another piece to it. And that's our perception of that event. So the perception of events is what creates the fear, our perception of what's going on. And it creates the fear and it also creates us beating ourselves up. And this is why we need to go back and change that perception. It's not the event itself. It is how we perceive the event. All military do not get PTSD. So we got to ask ourselves why they should all get it because they're all getting trauma all over the place. They should all have PTSD. If this is the way our minds work and this is who we are and what we're doing, then everybody that goes to a war situation should have PTSD, but they don't. It's almost like the placebo effect. What is that? You know, how can a sugar pill change your physical body? What is that really? Well, the people who don't get PTSD is they have a different perception of what happened. They may look at the situations. Well, this is just the way the world is. And this is what's happening. This is my role in it and I have to do it because I'm defending my country, you know, and they look at it that way. They don't look at it. Oh, my God, look what I've just done to that person over there. They don't see it that way, even though it may be true. It doesn't matter. 
What matters is how they're looking at it, their perception of it, what they think, you know, what, what's their intention. Their intention wasn't to hurt somebody. Their intention was something different. They were trying to protect their country. See, that's a whole nother intention. So the trauma happens after the event. Trauma is what you carry forward with you. And if any self-blame happens, you have negative vibes aimed directly at yourself. Directly at you with all of this power of consciousness, it's aimed directly at you. We are powerful and, we, and, and, and we're powerful creators. And that creates power aimed ourselves in a negative way is extremely painful, like I just said. Really, it's our perception of the event that causes problems. That's what trauma really is. When we are young, we are egocentric, which means it's self-focused. This is normal. This is a normal process of the brain's maturation. It's not something that kids are just, they're just bad and self-focused. That's not it at all. They have to think that the universe revolves around them. That's how they learn about this reality where they're at. And this is normal. Everybody goes through this stage of development. We all have to all go through it. Nobody's done anything wrong. So everything that happens, we think we caused it and blame ourselves. Even, you know, it doesn't matter. Even if it was somebody else doing something to us, you know, because really it had nothing to do with us. This is why those negative experiences need to be reevaluated from your adult mind perspective. To create, and what you're doing is you're correcting the perception that you were not the cause because you were a vulnerable child in the care of someone else. Children cannot care for themselves. They have to have adult caregivers that take care of them. They do not have the, you know, they have not learned. And we have such a long maturation time from birth to adulthood. We have one of the longest maturation times of any other species on this planet. So you can see there's a lot can go wrong in, in all of those years. But that's why we have to go back and reevaluate. What are we doing here? What's happening in me? And, and then you can just accept what happened. You can forgive others. You know, this process will free you from pain. This process will free you from all that pain you've been feeling all these years because you've turned some of that in on yourself. And so then what you'll start doing is then you'll start making your life about others, what you can give, not what you can get. Because see, when you're in this fear state, it's all about what you can get. Love is about others. Love is a vibe that we carry within ourselves. And when we go around other people, it moves through our, you know, the medium that we're in. We're in a vibratory medium. It moves in this medium and they can feel that. So love is about others and it helps others. Fear is about the self and is self-focused. And that's why we can do some really dark, ugly things to people, you know, when we are in fear. That's when, you know, you know, people call it, they say, oh, well, that was just evil, you know. Well, a lot of times the evil is done out of a fearful state. And, you know, you can see, you know, someone gets super fearful and it's like a handle on your back. It controls your behavior then you end up doing something you totally regret because that's not what you wanted to do. Then you see the ramifications of it. And that's why we start beating ourselves up. You know, look what I just did. I just yelled at this person and they were probably already having a bad day. Oh my God, look what I just did. You know, so then you, you know, you move on to the next phase of, well, well, you know, okay, yeah, I'm doing all this, but okay. If I just love myself, <laughs> You got to love yourself, you know, and I thought about that for a long time. Well, if I could just love myself, I was like, well, then everything will get better. Well, you know, the truth was, and for me being my authentic self of who I was before I was doing my work, I didn't love myself. So it's not authentic. I could say it all day long, but it still wasn't true. <laughs> it wasn't true. And other people could see that it wasn't true, you know. Uh, I'm loving myself and others. Oh, I love you. They feel the vibration of who you are. They know you're not loving them and they know you're not loving yourself either. You know, they know. They can sense these vibrations within us. We go on vibrations of the people around us, not what they do. That's why acting kind 
doesn't work anyway. So you're acting kind, you're doing all these things for other people and they're not doing, you know, they're not respecting you. They're not giving back. They're not doing anything in response to it because they feel your intention. They know that you're not doing it out of love and caring for them. They know that it's not even about them. It's about you, you know, and, and that just shuts people down. They're like, nah, never mind. And they don't want to interact with that because that can be scary because it's like, okay, well, that's not their intention. What is their true intention under there? What do they want? You know, so it's not authentic. So I didn't have it and I couldn't go there. I couldn't say, well, I love myself because I, when I felt around in myself, like ah, I don't love Cheryl. I don't like the way I treat people, you know, things like that. So what I, and then one day I was listening to a Tom Campbell and I got a gold nugget here. Here again is another magical helper coming in to help me figure this out. And then Tom gave me a clue that I can meet it halfway. I don't have to love myself. He was like, just don't dislike yourself. And I went, oh, wait a minute. Wait. Okay. I had help getting to where I'm at. I didn't do this all by myself. I gathered some fears when I was young. People around me weren't acting right. I took it on myself, blamed myself. So I can give myself some compassion here and I can just not hate myself. I can give myself compassion and not dislike myself. I can feel neutral. I can feel neutral about myself with no feeling. I don't feel good about, about Cheryl, but I also don't feel bad about Cheryl either. So as you start working out of this, you can have compassion for yourself because you're trying to do something really tough and getting rid of this fear. So it's like, oh, he's up on the Cheryl. Let's just feel neutral because I'm doing my very best. I'm doing the best I can do with what I have because I have a limited perception too because I grew up in a certain way. I had all these problems and things that I had to deal with as a, as a very young child. And I just had to let myself off the hook, not feel bad about myself anymore. And, but, and then I, I didn't have to love myself either. So see, that was another pressure. I need to love myself. Well, my behavior is showing me I don't love myself. So I just was able to let myself off the hook and just not feel nothing about it and just continue on with my work. And then as I kept moving forward with that, not hating myself, not trying to love myself when I didn't, I was moving forward and I thought, okay, now I'm getting somewhere. Because I was able uh, to remove more fear in, in a state to where I was just open and aware of where I was and what, what I was doing. You know, every time I got triggered, I'd feel a negative emotion. That's it. I would hop over to my bracelet and I had a saying, I'm going to work my bracelet right now. I'm going to do this instead of freaking out, you know. So I, and over time, as I started clearing out that fear and my intention was about others. It was about caring. I would see someone struggling somewhere. And then I'd say, whoa, well, what could I do to help? Because I wasn't full of fear anymore. So my intention was really to help. Then they really started reacting to that in a completely different way. People started moving towards me instead of away from me. They started feeling loving vibrations instead of icky, dark, ugly vibrations. You know, I started loving others in the correct way. And then good things started appearing all over the place in my experience. Things that I could like. Things that I could like about myself. And, you know, during, the, you know, that part where I was just starting to feel, you know, okay, wait, that experience went so much better than all of them have in the past. I can see it in that person's face. They really appreciated what I did, you know. And that started making me feel good about myself, that I had something good to offer and, you know, not doing this stuff and, and getting out there and <laughs> with my vibration, expecting everybody to react to me in a positive way, because I'm being nice to everybody. That was not my authentic self. That's who I wanted myself to be, but it wasn't who I was all the way in at my being level, who you think you are intellectually and who you are all the way in at the being level is two different things. And that's what this gets you in touch with. That's what this work does. This is really a journey to the self, the journey to yourself. And that's where everything's at. And that concludes my talk for today. That's all I had to bring. And you go ahead, Julia, what do you got? 
a lot to digest. That's just great stuff, man. And you've just proven how your technique works. It worked on you. And again, it always goes back to just having that awareness and starting there and putting that intention out there and then just being observant <laughs> and uh, paying attention and you'll be surprised. And it really is amazing how all these incidents can come up in our lives once we make an intention to do something, whatever it might be. You intend to quit drinking, all of a sudden you'll have these things. That's what happened with me when I quit drinking alcohol. I put that intention out there and man, some things, not really good things happened and to where I finally said, okay, it's time to quit. So yeah, whatever that intention is. And you know, it wasn't fun going through those negative experiences that finally got me to get to that point. But when I look back on it, I see how orchestrated it was and it's just amazing. And a lot of people, in the uh, simulation theory camp, you know, think we all, and we really do, we all have our own individual reality stream, you know, you know, particular to us. And um, yeah, I mean, just, it's all for us. It's all for us. And like you said, we are so powerful. And if we turn all that negative, hateful energy on ourselves, man, we're just causing so much damage and it takes so much energy to it's like this vicious cycle to put that in there and, you know, because fear and hate take a lot of energy, whereas love is, is perpetual motion. It's self-generating. It takes no energy. It gives you energy. So when yes. you can make that alchemical change, Biggie wants to chime in and yeah. um, makes all Tell the it. difference. He's just saying love is the answer. Fear is the problem and love is the answer. He's just telling it. The highest mountain. <laughs> so yeah, you there? <laughs> yeah, the dog. The dogs are getting antsy, and we got um, we have some new people that came to the community. A couple from Sweden, really awesome folk, and um, this one uh, girl, Tumera, Tawera. She came back by, and she's gonna stay here a month, and then come back again in late summer early and then we got the um the family of four on their way from south of france they're a dutch family and they also have a dog so things are really changing around here but it's so much fun and i just made a video earlier today how a lot of people when it's this time to retire you know that's what they do they retire they sit back and they just go okay now i'll wait till this is over but you know astrologically after your second Saturn return which is around 60 years old that's when you know a lot of the greats did their best work so this is our opportunity for all the seniors out there to, to do something instead of just retire and sit back and you know figure out ways to entertain ourselves there's so much so much more fun to get involved in whatever these intentional communities are great because you can get free from the matrix with it I mean, you get very self-sustained and it's so cool getting like-minded, like-hearted people together because one of the premises for this one is that people are willing to do their fear work, their shadow work, you know, or they're already embarking on it. And of course, once you've done yours to a certain extent, you know when other people are willing and if they've done any and all that, you know, you can just free people so much easier once you change that resonance. And, you know, if people aren't genuine, you pick it up right away once you get to that point. So it's so much magic, so much magic to be had. And her and Cheryl's bracelets, um, she has Sandy Bowles in Austin, Texas, helping her make those now. And uh, she's getting a lot of requests for them. And like I said before, she and Michael are going to come on here on Sunday. And we're going to have a good Q&A interactive with you guys. And yeah, 23. 23 2023 is the year it's the year to break free so and this stuff here is just gold it really is like since cheryl and i have both done this work and we know how it is to get to that other side we realize what we're giving you out there and we know that some of you are appreciating it and that you see what see see it for what it is and man it's just so cool to see people you know grasp onto this and then just change their whole world because reality is an inside job 
<laughs> it really is. It, um, you know, make it the best as possible. And it's such a magical time that we're in that we get to share this information worldwide instantaneously. So, I mean, that's magic, it, you know, and we're magic and it's all magic. So let's get on with the magic. Yes, it is magic. And the magical helpers just come out. And you're absolutely right. You know, after 60, you know, um, I'm I'm 62, uh, not 62, 60. I'm 60. <laughs> um, and, you know, you, you gained, a, a, you know, a lifetime of experience. And so you can turn that around and you can, you know, if you can do this work, then you can give the best of you. And then you have something to offer the world. And, you know, if you do give that to the world, then you become the magical helper for a lot of other people so that they can get themselves out of, you know, pain and trauma. And then once you, once you do that, then they can go forth and help others. And as we all work together in this thing, what we're doing, we you know, we can change the whole world this way. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. And one of the things that Sandy Bowles said, shout out to you. Um, you know, and one of the things that she said is that what, what Julie and I are, are doing here is we're putting language to what is an internal process that does not have words around it. These are all in feeling states. Fear is a feeling state. Love is a feeling state. So what we're doing is we're putting analogies and words around these inner processes that and, and that in turn is what helps other people understand what's taking place, where you can understand why you feel the way you do. Believe me, I was having all these feelings and all these fears. I had no idea what was going on. It was just chaotic. My life was chaotic. You know, I, I was working as a nurse and it was just something every day. You know, it was so much harder to deal with because I was living in my intellect and I wasn't in that feeling space where I could understand what was happening until I, you know, did a lot of research and trying to figure out what was going on. I went to all the counselors and I, I did all that and, and nothing really helped me, you know, really work and get somewhere with my inner life until I found Tom Campbell and I went to those immersives that's when the rubber was meeting the road and and that's when I finally got the right information that really what's happening here is my fears are interacting with me and I'm I would you know you've got a negative spiral and then you've got a positive spiral so I was in a negative downward spiral just spiraling out down into fear pain panic depression it just goes on and on but then I found out oh there's a way to go the other direction <laughs> And that other way up into, you know, happiness, joy, love, that is also a direction we can go into, but you've got to come back up through the negative fear to get to the other side of it. Then your intentions are more of a loving space. And what can I do for others and not, you know, how is Cheryl going to, you know, be able to survive today? And what am I going to do to help myself? You know, it's not self-focused anymore. And when you're thinking about others, Everything in your life just starts falling together because love is a much more powerful vibration than fear is. Fear is a very, fear is a very, you know, it feels powerful, but it's not really powerful. People who are super fearful, they don't get, they rarely get much of anything that they want. But if you're a loving vibration, you can have anything you want. The world just opens up to you. It's like it just sets it down in a, a platter. You know, the world is your really your oyster if you're coming at it from a, a vibration of love. And I know it sounds corny, but it's just the way it is. You know, fear is the problem and love is the answer. And Julia, I'm so excited to do this work with you. It is just, you know, I, I, I've been retired for a few years now. And this has been the biggest up thing I've done in a while. And I really love the, all the people I'm here to help and I'm, I'm about bringing the love vibration and I'm all for it. I'm all in. Love it. Love it. Love it. So thank you everybody yeah. for listening. Yeah, me too. And just wait till you meet Michael. You'll just be even more because, you know, he's the one, you know, language lessons of the heart. So he's, he, he's put it, you know, started putting all this into language and you took what Tom Campbell gave you and made this whole technique out of it because I've been following Tom Campbell for a long time and, you know, it was like one of those things, we'll lose the fear, you know, and like Jason, be fearless. But again, 
now everyone has the, a technique to do it and that's huge that's huge and it's life-changing so I know that a lot of people will embark on this and like you said it's just so exciting and gives you so much vitality and spunk and yeah it's just um, very cool and we appreciate everybody who's here and uh, yeah just great people on this channel and yeah looking forward to chatting with y'all and uh Hope everybody's having a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Remember to always stay focused on what you want and help others if you can. And we'll talk to you next time. And thank you again, Cheryl. And thank you, Julia. You're a wonderful person. I really love working with you. Thank you so much for having me. Same to you. You are so awesome. And yeah, this is such a gift. And more soon, people. So, ciao, ciao. <laughs>